Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how drills work. Let's start with impact drills. The idea of impact drills originated from slug wrenches as all the impact drivers follow the same motion. Imagine a slug wrench fixed on a hex head or nut. Repetitive hammering at the slug head would slowly reach very high torque which would be near impossible with a hand wrench. The key feature of impacts is they always have a hex head or square head for socket bit attachment because a drill chuck would cause too much slippage and torque loss during fluctuating torques impacts usually generates. Another feature is that no load or free spin speed is much higher than other drill because the drill is not geared down to provide high torque. Let's split up the impact generator in an impact drill. In the diagram, if you were to unroll the shaft where the hammer weight climbs it ends up like a glass shape. With this, you can get the hammer action in both forward and reverse directions. Looking at the top, if we rotate counterclockwise, we go up the left channel and if we rotate clockwise, we go up the right channel. We can also see this behavior once key discs are cleared. The spring pushes the hammer. The spring also ensures that the hammer never reaches the top and binds the shaft. The key disc base is attached to the bit holder. When there is load, the base key disc is too much for the high speed low torque motor to turn, which causes the hammer to climb up. The shaft is compressing the spring. Once the locking keys are cleared, the spring pushes the keyed weight with high speed generating an impact. This diagram shows counterclockwise impact generation. The process is repeated very fast thanks to the high speed motor. Battery powered impacts make it easy to take out rusted, painted or damaged screws. However, pneumatic or air powered impacts are automotive industry standard because they yield much higher torque. Next, uh, let's look at variable torque drills. As the diagram shows, the combination of gears which increases the torque and slows the output speed. When the dial is turned on a variable torque drill to set different torque selection, a spring is compressed on the paint thrust washer. In the diagram we can see the lower torque settings where the spring is not compressed. The next is where part of the spring is compressed. This acts as a clutch. We can see the motor output is the green gear and the drill output is the yellow gear. The yellow gear will be powered as long as the torque remains within the spring force on the pink thrust washer because the red metal balls will always take the path of least resistance. The spring is bottomed out when the entire torque of the motor is transferred to the output. In this case, we will not hear the ratcheting action as you would when the spring is not fully compressed. Lastly, there is hammer drills which help break down the adhesion in bricks or concrete. The hammer drills have a striker which pushes the drill bit forward. In the diagram, to repeat the hammer action, the user has to maintain pressure at the bit so it can be pushed in for the striker to engage. Important note in the animation, which is also true in other design, is that if you force a hammer action to stop, then the bit also stops. The reverse is also true. If the bit stops, then the hammer action also stops because the hammer and drill actions is powered by the same motor. This is to prevent the bit from breaking should it ever get stuck. And finally, we can see all three different designs of drills working simultaneously. Important note is that the design that I'm animating might be different from the ones in the latest drills where they can have a combination of these drilling actions, but their objective will always be the same. I hope you like this video and thank you for watching.